Welcome Farming Simulator fans. Today I'm going to show you how to extend AutoDrive's network to the lumber mill in Goldcrest Valley. These same principles that you see here can be applied to any new map when you're recording routes and networks for that new map. I will do a little bit of talking about how to set up the Russian map. Um, I may even do a video of showing you what I did but for the intents of this video all I'm going to do with a new map is talk about how to do it but that will come later on we're gonna first to extend any network in auto drive we're gonna first bring up the debug mode which is this button in the bottom right hand corner that looks like a triangle go ahead and bring that up as you can see in Goldcrest Valley you're gonna have green and white lines show up if you're near a road uh, this is because AutoDrive already comes configured with a few waypoints in Goldcrest Valley at most destinations, but the lumber mill is not included. So to include the lumber mill, we're going to first by start recording a one-way route. When you record one-way routes, they only allow travel in the direction that they were recorded in. You do this by clicking this record button once and it will turn red red means that you're recording one-way routes so let's go ahead and drive a one-way route to the lumber mill then once you get to a spot in the lumber mill where you'd like to have the tractor stop go ahead and click this create new target button right here it looks like a waypoint icon and then type in whatever name you would prefer to call the lumber mill and hit enter and then whatever name you typed in will appear right here so go ahead and finish recording your one-way route back to the road and then go ahead and stop recording now we need to connect the lumber mill route to the rest of the Goldcrest Valley network and this step is very important to do correctly if you do not do it correctly it will not be able to drive so as you can see we have a blue line that blue line represents the waypoint we're coming from and then if you go ahead and click the select neighbor point it will generate a white line and that is a list of the closest waypoints to where you're at right now and if you go ahead and select next neighbor point it will cycle through the list until you get to the beginning of your new lumber mill route now as you can see the way I have it set up is correct blue represents where we're coming from and white represents where we're going to so we're coming from the road and we're driving to the lumber mill because this is the way that I recorded it you can also think of the blue line as a green line and the white line as a white line and as you can rep and as you can see this is our start of our recording route and it the first color is green the next color is white and then it generated a waypoint and switched back to green and then back to white and then generated another waypoint and then went back to green and back to white you've got to remember this color coding waypoints always in between a green and a white and the direction in between two waypoints are represented by green represents coming from a waypoint white represents going to a waypoint make sure you you understand that functionality otherwise you will not have auto drive work correctly so let's go ahead and select a little bit better of a waypoint to turn right into the lumber mill there we go that looks good to me now to toggle the connection between this waypoint and this waypoint you go ahead and hit toggle connection in between which is this button right here and as you can see the waypoint is right here goes to green goes to white then the, you have another waypoint and goes back to green if it goes white to white to green to green to white you have messed something up you need to click this button again and make sure your blue line represents where you're coming from and the white line represents where we're going to so now I'm going to set up the left turn into the lumber mill 
right about there it looks good now as you can see the white line hasn't changed as we move around this connection in between you and that point will remain constant no matter how far away you drive from that point so always get this set up first and then drive around and get your blue line set up so we're going to go ahead and toggle that connection now we're going to make a left and right turn out of the lumber mill so we're going to go ahead and select our next neighbor point that right there looks good now we're going to keep going and our left turn right there looks good as well now if it doesn't select a waypoint over here the white line doesn't select a waypoint over here you can go ahead and turn this off and then turn that back on and that will regenerate the list of nearest waypoints for the light white line and you can attach it to some of the waypoints over here and now that we have left turn coming in and right turn coming in and left turn going out and right turn going out we can go ahead and tell auto drive that we have extended the network we do this by clicking this button right here this is the update ways button when you press it it will make your game look crashed on Goldcrest Valley give it a few minutes eventually this will turn red and you will see text right here giving you a percentage until completion if you're on a new map with very little waypoints or very small network this will run a little bit faster but on Goldcrest Valley the file size is about 3 megabytes so I'll see you after this is done compiling and we're back and as you can see up here it said that we were on 100% finished so now we can go ahead and test to make sure that our new destination is in auto drive and we can go ahead and do this by selecting the target now on all, on Goldcrest Valley, the shop is the first destination in the list. So any new destinations you add to the network will be before the shop. So go ahead and left left click the arrow, the left arrow, and as you can see the lumber mill is right here and the shop is there. And we can go ahead and test it and see if we can drive to the lumber mill. And as you can see we've reached the lumber mill so now let's go ahead and test it to see if we can leave the lumber mill and we'll go to the shop and as you can see we're going to the shop so now some of you may have noticed that after the red circle is a purple circle when you're recording routes let's talk about what that purple circle does this comes in handy especially on the Russian map where there are some bridges that only allow travel of tractors of only one tractor at a time or for example this little dirt road right here as you can see we can only fit one tractor on it right now what that purple icon represents is that you're recording two-way routes which allowed travel in either direction with the the exception that if there is a tractor currently on that portion of the route anybody trying to drive that portion will be held up until that portion is cleared so we're gonna go ahead and start recording a one two-way route and as you can see it's now purple and once we start driving this line will turn red and as you can see we're now creating a red line so we're going to stop recording and we're going to start recording a one-way route to turn around we're also going to give it a destination of the wood chip pile we're going to finish turning around and now we're going to stop recording and now setting connecting these two routes together is just like before 
just remember that we travel counterclockwise to turn around so we're coming from the red line going to this so right now the blue line is on the wa wrong waypoint so we'll back up generate our neighbor points and that right there is looking good because we're coming from here going to there and we'll toggle the connection now we'll turn around cycle it to the beginning of the red line and we're coming from here going to there and we'll toggle that connection now we'll go ahead and do this side now the way I'm going to set it up is going to exclude the lumber mill from going to the wood chip pile but that's fine because we're already here and I don't mind driving that little bit of distance so to do this we're coming from the red line making a right turn to the road so we're going to head and regenerate our neighbor point list and cycle through until we get to a waypoint that is good Now as you can see here that's a very sharp turn. So in order to fix this we'll go ahead and move our blue line. This also applies if you're creating intersections and your waypoints that you have generated are too far apart like it is here. We'll go ahead and move our blue line back to here. And as you can see we're coming from this waypoint going to here. Now if we hit toggle connection between it breaks that link and in order to regenerate that link we'll go ahead and hit the recording button once and then stop recording and as you can see the blue line is now pointing to a waypoint that's right above our head you can't see it but we are and if we hit the toggle connection in between as you can see we now have generated a connection between these two waypoints and now if we back up and cycle through the neighbor points as you can see we are now coming from here going to there and we can toggle that connection and now if we try to make a right turn out from the wood chip pile you can see now that we're not making that steep of a right turn now of course I wasn't in line with my previously re recorded route but that's okay because all it's going to do is make a little bit of a wiggle waggle right here. We'll go ahead and toggle this connection and as you can see we're coming from here and going to there. And now we'll do the making a left turn into the wood chip pile. We'll go ahead and toggle that connection and it and we're going to double check to make sure our color codes are right so we're going green white green white red and then we're going red green white green we look all good and now i'm going to go ahead and compile this and i'll see you after and we're back so we're going to go ahead and test to see if we can drive to the wood chip pile We're going to go ahead and drive. And as you can see, we've arrived at the wood chip pile. And now we'll go ahead and see if we can drive to the shop. If it doesn't want to drive, check the text right up here and it will tell you if it's encountering any issues. Um, you can also check to see restarting your game and checking to see if that works. Just a word of caution if you 
restart your game make sure you update the ways button before you restart if you've done any changing otherwise your loading screen will appear to have crashed uh, that's because auto drive automatically update the ways button if the game hasn't been saved and there's been edits to its network so remember that even if there has been edits to it and you have updated it but you didn't save your game it will still auto update your your waypoints so remember that if you hit this button you've got to also save your game otherwise it doesn't remember that you've updated it and it will do it again and it's really annoying because it takes about four minutes on Gold Crest Valley I'll see you in a bit I'm gonna switch over to the Russian map and show you how I would set that up Welcome to the Russian map. So to do the Russian map, all auto drive requires is a little bit of planning on how you're going to do it. So if you're on a new map, what you've got to start off with is the road network. You've got to record all the roads in the network in order to allow auto drive to work correctly. Once you build the road network into auto drive, you can then add on extensions to destinations but you've got to first start by building the main road network into auto drive which in my earlier takes of doing this took at least 30 minutes to get about half of this map done I won't make you sit through that uh, I may post a video later on of showing me how to do that how how I did that in warp speed but for the sense for the for this video I'll just talk to you about how I'm going to do it. So what I would do is you can see right here this road is one giant loop. So I'd start with that and I'd start at the first T intersection that it begins at which is right here. And then I'd just drive up and around and then back down and I'd stop at this roundabout do a one way route around the roundabout and connect this loop to that roundabout and then I drive back around the loop and then then I probably come down here and drive up here and over here connect these two together uh, I would connect this main loop road right here to this side do this little bit connect these two together do this roundabout do this section connect that to the roundabout do this road right here connect that end and that end together do this road connect these two ends together do this road connect these two ends together um, do this road right here and connect that end and connect this end maybe do this little section right here uh, probably do this road and as you can see it gets it gets busy it just you gotta remember have have no ends and just connect everything together you're, you're, you're building in the road network and then once you have the entire road network you can just watch the first part of this video and add destinations on it as you would like now for the grain elevator if you're using tippers to go to the grain elevator according to the manual make sure you place the waypoint after the trip tip trigger otherwise it won't be able to figure out how to dump the grain into the grain elevator but that's that's essentially how you build a new network from scratch you start off by building the roads and then once you have the roads you can build the driveways or the extensions to the uh, places you would like to go I hope this video helped with auto drive if you have any comments go ahead and leave comments below if you like my video give me a thumbs up and i'll see you next time i'm probably will do course play videos in the future have a nice night